rural history and heritage associations came together in partnership with the council uh, to put together a historical plaque scheme from Eastern to New Brighton. This, this was hugely important for heritage store tourism and and this scheme has now been added to the further historical site plaques. We'll hear, we will hear a lot about visual immunity here, understandable from the point of view of local residents. Maybe just as important is the visual immunity from the river, where, the, where this is an exceptional site. The site was so of note that the, the name Birkenhead Point in Dremont, Sydney, was named after this very site in 1846. And I've had the pleasure in the last five years to actually visit about this in my hands in Sydney. I was able to present a plaque to the local authority of Canada Bay where Birkenhead Point is, and it's a large neon sign. It's a tram this piece as well, by the way. Um, the site is mentioned in almost every historical tour in the world, in particular in Mons on the River, including the Mersey Ferries. The most important point here is we're talking, and we hear, we've heard an awful lot about the economic regeneration here in relation to Canal Earth. What about the economic regeneration of tourism, which is the key driver, and more money is coming into this area at this moment of time in tourism than, than anything else? And I really am uh, not I'm unhappy that that was sidelined in that report from the start. Um, so, the, the Mersey, so there is so there's massive growth, growth in heritage tourism uh, on Merseyside, uh, where Wirral has, has, has to take its fair share of the cake. Uh, Liverpool is now putting tourists. The uh, economic importance of tourism, I believe, outweighs everything else here. Why on earth, in this present climate, would we like to build an industrial building on such an important site? Wirral has been highly commended by English Heritage for its promotion of tourism, for its heritage strategy, and particularly its heritage <coughs> open days, which are the second largest in the country. There's only one place ahead of us. So we're making every effort, effort to move forward uh, from a tourism perspective. Uh, uh, so basically, if this application is allowed, we're talking about a major uh, uh, step backwards when you know tourism is booming and it's just crazy. And that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Well done for staying within five minutes. Well, thank you. Okay, um, Jean Stapleton, please come forward. Could you just want to switch your mic off? Yeah, that's easier. Thanks. Um, Chair and members of the committee, I'm speaking on behalf of residents of Priory Ward today who objected to this application for the public They bought their properties because <coughs> of the location Yes. 
this is my application. I want to go to that anomaly in this trustee. If the application is granted, it means that these principles only apply to the business community and to the detriment of the residents of Bayou Walden. It might be a local decision, but it certainly won't be a local solution. It won't promote independence for Bayou Walden only, and it certainly won't raise their aspirations and enable them to grow. Please consider their situation. The decision is yours to make, and I hope you have the wisdom of Solomon. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Could you just turn the microphone? Okay. Um, I tend to see the slide of Izzy said, and um, one of the leading things that struck me was the height of the building against the apartments that were already there. I'm just wondering, Matthew, have you got a visual of that that we could look at, please? If I just explain these, these slide, uh, slides, uh, this is a, an artist's impression, as it were, um, taken from uh, the ground floor of, of Priory Wharf. So um, the residential apartments on, on the ground floor of, of Priory Wharf, this, this would be uh, the view that they would see from the ground floor. As you move up to the first floor, it, uh, it, it would look like that, and the second floor, and then finally uh, the, the upper story, which is the third floor. Um, so uh, as you move up, up the building on Priory Wharf, which, which is elevated over the site, and you begin to look over the building uh, and towards the river.
But just today, I was looking at the design and access statements and reading the design and access statements on the website. And that's not what the documentation says. The supporting documentation online says that from time to time and several times during the year, 24 hour operation will be required as part of the nature of the industry that we're talking about. If we look at 24-hour operation in that facility uh, for residents, then we're probably looking at a different definition of immunity. Um, so we're away from this idea that won't stand up to take the reminders of fear of gain, of the loss of, uh, of, um, of, of rates of equity, etc. important though they may be to the residents. Immunity is defined by how are you able to enjoy a good night's sleep all the air. It's clearly not picked up in the applicant's own supported um, documentation which is available online. The second item that I'm under there is um, the adverse effect on neighbouring uses. Now I was keen to explore some of this with um, with Matthew because very often when we get commercial applications, we get uh, supermarkets. So we get a supermarket one to open and the first person that objects is another supermarket because that's the nature of competition. That isn't the case here. We have two completely different commercial activities going on. And I'm not happy about an idea that we allow one commercial industry that we like activity to go onto a land that is detrimental to an existing commercial activity. To me, that doesn't quite meet the criteria of EM6. And that's what I mean when I say I don't think those things have been teased out uh, as part of the um, of, of, as part of the force. And again, we fired from the managing director of um, of Ladra and, and the and the report uh, makes mention of their, um, their objections to the page 45. I'm concerned that the application we have doesn't in fact comply with the M6 uh, in terms of both the immunity of the residents in respect to majority because we get to pull out uh, operation several times a year, but probably more specifically, the adverse effect that the uh, that the, uh, the, the proposal will have on the existing businesses in the area, I think is a, is a big one. Thanks, Jake. Denise? Thank you, Chair. I mean, I was at the site visit and I was really, really shocked when <coughs> the terms were put out as to where the building was going to be and how high it was going to be. And I do really feel it is unacceptable loss of an immunity for the residents. So, Chair, I will be moving refusal on this item tonight. If anybody else wants to speak before I move, refusal. Can I, can I suggest that if you refuse to do so, we have gone to a lot of the steward court and not just the loss of the which is So it would be the absence of the loss of the to the Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Does anybody else want to speak on it before we do that? I mean, I'm having, I'm having referred to EM6, so I've not heard it referred to, and I don't see it referred to that much in the report. I mean, I hope that the other could comment on what my interpretation of EM6 was to the adverse, um, to the adverse effect of loss of immunity. Thank you, Chair. 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 Thank you, Chair.
And on the question of the immunity to neighbouring uh, businesses, I struggle to, to sort of think as to what negative impact that would be other than a loss of overview. I'm not sure if other members can help me out with that. To, to you, Chair, uh, I think uh, it's easier to understand the impact the development can have on residential immunity uh, more often than it is uh, to understand any potential impacts on neighbouring uh, businesses. Uh, that might have joined the uh, application slide. And, and the sort of things that, that you, you might consider would be um, uh, would, a, would a proposed development and prejudice the expansion of an, enjo of an enjoying use because of issues of um, no uh, noise disturbance, or, uh, uh, access arrangements, or, uh, and, and other things. Um, likewise, you, you might consider uh, potential um, pollution impacts from a proposed use and whether that might have any um, adverse impact on neighbouring uses. Um, so it isn't just about residential immunity. There, there are other things that you can take into consideration. Um, noise, general disturbance, pollution, um, access, etc. Um, so, so it is just, it, it is, immunity is, is, is quite wide ranging, really. Can okay, Mr. Hill wants to speak to you? I think we need to be careful because um, when considering uh, reasons for refusal, um, they, they need to be um, uh, backed up with evidence. So we, we have heard from a petitioner that it's his view um, that there is the potential for impact in terms of dust that, that comes from the site, but that isn't, that isn't backed up by any um, evidential study or, or anything that, that, might, that, that might support that argument. So I think if you were to explore those sorts of things, you need to be careful because in the event of any subsequent appeal, we would be expected to robustly defend that and, 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 and provide evidence to, to, to that regard. Can I, can I just follow up then? Um, with access, that was mentioned in the plan, that's what we're testing the plan, which is whether or not access to the business will be feasible to everyone. If you mind, can you just comment on that through, through the chair? I mean, the the access to where they are is premises is just round by the space. That's where their vehicle access, their pedestrian access is. Um, their base, as Dr. Hennel referred to, uh, a gate on the promenade at the back. Um, that stretch of promenade there is in transformation. Um, there has been some access across the car park and um, onto that promenade for some years. And Dr. Hennel tells us that that is um, an access route that's used by some of his staff, um, particularly on the complex, on the bottom of the promenade. Uh, that access uh, could come that way, or it could come round and use the main road. So we don't consider here that access um, uh, would be restricted to any adjacent businesses if, if members were willing to support uh, this appeal uh, on this application. Uh, just, just to comment on what Matthew said, um, the, um, the other aspects here are around uh, immunity. Uh, as we understand it, um, you know, obviously during the construction phase, there will be some disturbance inevitably because you are constructing something there. But the construction practices and everything take account of noise and disturbance and have means of ways of, of, of limiting that. From what we understand of the proposed use, that uh, once the warehousing and stores are constructed and the boats are to. Uh, they are modern vessels, uh, they are quiet vessels in terms of their um, operation and when we assessed and had a look at the detail of that we didn't think that there was a significant adverse impact on neighbouring um, 
businesses from that activity. Uh, we took into account the fact that the deep water channel, uh, as you come down the Mersey, runs very close to the shore um, on, on, the, on the world side of the um, Mersey, and obviously a fair amount of uh, shipping going up and down there, and also coming into Canal Leds and down to the Manchester Ship Canal um, as well. So there's quite a lot of movement on the river and the, the ships and vessels. So as I said, when, when we assessed all of that, we didn't think that there was a significant adverse impact on, on adjacent businesses. Uh, there are other businesses across that um, area, not just LBRA, but there are call centres, other offices, and there um, as well. And again, we didn't assess the impacts on the cost of the adverse in that house Okay, is there anybody else who would like to is considered to lead to an unacceptable loss of amenity for the occupiers of primary wall through noise, general disturbance and poor outlook and is therefore, and therefore contrary to the provision of the UDP plan policy EM6, EU Employment Development. This application was subject to a member's site visit on Monday following its deferral from the Planning Committee on the 19th of June. Permission is sought for the change of use of this dwelling to a house of multiple occupation, providing semi independent living to young adults um, upon leaving care. Residents would share a communal lounge, kitchen, and bathrooms, effectively living as one household. 24 hour staff supervision will be provided on site. Some of the objections received are not material to making a decision under the Planning Act, such as devaluation of property and the impact the proposal may have on residents in the area being able to foster. The scale of the proposals are considered to be acceptable. Regard has been had to the fact that property could be used by between three ex residents with an element of care provided without requiring permission. The additional two residents amounting to eight in total is not considered to result in a level of activity which would give rise to adverse impacts by virtue of loss of privacy or disturbance. Regard in this sense has also been had to the premises being managed and supervised 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The, proposal, uh, the proposed use is considered acceptable having regard to providing inclusive and mixed community-based accommodation no alterations are proposed to external elevations with existing windows providing for acceptable levels of daylight and outlet. The application is recommended for approval and there is a qualified petition of function. Would the representative of the petition like to address the committee in support of their petition? I'll speak on my behalf. Okay, thank you, George. Right. Just before uh, we go forward on this, um, just need to make it clear that the applicant can't speak because only the board council that we're going to speak. Okay. First of all, can I, um, can, can I thank the committee um, 
for the site visit yesterday, which I thought was um, was proper to do, because I think it, you need to see uh, and understand the makeup of the area, where it is, and what it's about. And I think that um, the committee did see. Uh, first of all, I, I couldn't say any other than uh, um, property which has been well looked after. It's tidy, it's clean, uh, and you know, I think it fits the criteria that we're actually looking for. However, putting um, eight um, people out of care into an area which is predominantly very residential uh, is, is a break from what is normally seen in that area. Um, and I've got reservations, strong reservations about um, one of the questions that I did ask at the site visit yesterday to the, um, the person who was representing the company. And that question was, um, if you have eight, eight people in there, and the, how are you going to control the number of people arriving in the front door, which is predominantly six foot away from the front door of the next door of the house. Um, and no problem at all with six of the bedrooms. Six of the bedrooms were uh, what we call the bedrooms. I think they're more like lounges uh, as well as the bedroom. And I think they fit the criteria quite well in what we're looking for. The other two um, bedrooms, five bedrooms, eight, um, to me were inferior. And be honest with you, you couldn't put a bed in, with, uh, in there. Um, the other thing also told us that the council had basically said that they had to change the bathroom from one of the bathrooms, which I thought was perfect for anyone, um, that they had to change that to make that one of the bedrooms and move the bathroom next door into one of the rooms, which I think is inappropriate for a bedroom in the first place in it. And I don't think it meets the bedroom size um, that would be acceptable. Um, so I, I've got reservations, real reservations, about saying yes to this in, in its present uh, format. And I think that two of the bedrooms realistically should be ruled out. It, it's a place that is fit if it's going to go ahead. If it was going to go ahead, it should be no, for no more than six. Going back to my original point, how do they uh, then go into the community and work in the community? The, the owner's representative basically said there will be no visitors allowed in at the property. And what they're basically saying is that the people who will be residing there have got to go out and stay in the area and meet with the people who they want to be friends with outside. No one will be allowed to come back. In the, in the light of I don't see any mention of that in terms of uh, that being a condition. So I just wanted to draw the com committee's uh, point to that. Um, apart from that, the residents, quite obviously, I think Matthew you just made the relevant points about what isn't here tonight for planning reasons. Uh, I have had a word with the um, petitioner uh, tonight that that wouldn't be acceptable. Um, but they have got real main concerns where you start changing an area and you start, and we have this, if you remember, uh, in Devonshire um, Park, um, which went on for three years with another company from Liverpool. Uh, and in the end, after three chances, that went through. Um, but um, having said that, I just think that the, the area needs. Um, and it needs this committee to assess, is it the right area? And that's why I say it's most important that the people who are on this committee and who attended the site as it is today can see for themselves and know for themselves uh, when they make their decisions tonight that they will have at least seen what it is.